Okay, so day one of the Booktubeaton, and warning, can't do the one outside, it's pouring rain, so I feel like it's gonna be a struggle to do that one because it's been raining pretty much every day this summer so far, so I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to do it because of that. But I have my books there. You might notice, Emily, this is different from your TBR. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's probably gonna not follow my TBR. I didn't really know what was going to happen. I'm the type of person, I'll change my mind 50 times, so. These are possibly the books that I will be reading this week. You might notice this one is pretty big, but it's like why? So it's like super fast. And anyway, I did start the audiobook today. I have currently listened to two hours worth of it. And so far I am enjoying myself, but I was thinking about picking one for tonight because I have to do the laundry like an adult, sadly. And I thought, you know what? In between loads, I should be reading something. So I think I might try the smell of other people's houses because that would be way too fitting. But hopefully you enjoy it. I know this one is more like a contemporary and I've been a little bit in a slump even though I've been reading consistently. But whatever. I don't know. I think we're gonna go for this one because I didn't have like a specific challenge towards it. It's more like maybe for the cover. So this is gonna be the one that I'm gonna be trying to read today and I will update you once I read a little bit about it because I know there's only like 200 and something pages. So maybe if I'm really into it, I can finish it today, which would be awesome, but I do have some editing to do, so we'll see. So I thought I would update you here because why not? My camera's already all set up. So I am currently at the end of date one-ish. I don't think I'm going to do much more reading tonight because I do have some videos to edit. So I'm currently at page 108. I don't think you're going to really be able to see that. <laughs> Basically, you're just following the life of a couple of people that live in Alaska, which the author is from, which I thought was a... Uh, Quite nice. It's a very slow paced, character driven type of story. The writing is beautiful, and so far I am enjoying myself. So I'm like pretty much halfway through this. And then I was listening to the audiobook throughout the day, and I'm currently at 2 hours 13 minutes and 50 seconds. So overall, not bad for a first day. I didn't finish any book on the first day, but wasn't really expecting to, wasn't really trying to. I still have. The other ones, but I feel like it's more during the weekend that I might be able to finish a book in one day unless like I really focus on that one day. Anyway, not bad for the first day. I've been feeling so small. Watch the clock ticking off the wall. But tonight I'm letting it go. Spend my coin for sure. I'm gonna be myself, or I could be someone else. No one's stopping me now. I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes. I just wanna feel alive. It's just what I do when I'm out, so try not to hold me down. Feel alive when I'm in this town. Look at those beautiful stars, I wanna drive. Drive a faster car Lay my troubles to rest Blow the smoke through my cigarette City lights looking fine And I know this is my time now I'm gonna be myself Or I could be someone else No one's stopping me now I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes 
wanna feel alive. It's just what I do. Day two, as you kinda saw already, was kinda busy. I had really fun going to see that exposition of like plant flowers and it was really nice. It was sunny, it was time to just enjoy it because it's been raining every single day. But that means I didn't do that much reading up until I got home and I finished my first book. Yay! So uh, this one has 225, I think, pages? 20, 23. So 223 pages. I really enjoyed this book. If you like contemporary where you um, see people, like, follow people living a couple, like, moments in their life type of thing. I don't know how to say that in English, but in French it's like tranche de vie, like you just see like a slice of their lives. And you're following four teenagers going through quite a bit actually. And I was reading about the author and her writing is actually inspired by her family like four generations in Alaska and I thought it was really inspiring. Anyway, if you are looking for great YA contemporary, I definitely recommend it. It's definitely a character driven, but I enjoyed it. I'm giving it a four stars. Something is flashing and I don't know if it's because it's not recording. I'm freaking out a little. As for the audiobook, I'm currently at four hours and eight minutes. So we're advancing, we're getting somewhere, and that's gonna be probably it for tonight. It's like 9.30 and I have to be awake early tomorrow. I need to start reading a lot more because I'm supposed to be reading seven books this week, so Day two, finish one. I'm in the middle of another one, but tomorrow I need to start getting things, just taking things seriously. Like, come on, Emily, you didn't do well in your last readathon. This time, it is time. I need to. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Day three, I wanted to update you on my reading slash show you what I'm planning on reading in next and then just, you know, advancing because we're day three and I'm very far behind. I actually, I did finish one book and I am at like four hours in my audiobook, so it's not that bad. But before I continue, I wanted to talk about uh, something. Yesterday I uploaded my July wrap up, basically talking about the books that I've read so far this month because I wanted to keep that readathon on its own because hopefully I'll read seven books and then it would be 17 books to try and like condense in one video and it would just be ridiculous. And in that video, I was talking about a lot of like unpopular opinions, some of them being about uh, popular YA books that are new, which usually can be controversial, but even if people dislike my review, they might dislike the video, but there's never like hate. I feel like we're all able to have arguments and like proper discussion, proper mature discussions. But I also mentioned, uh, Black Prism by Brent Weeks and I was mentioning a few things that bothered me about the book because in my opinion there was quite a few things that were sexism and I was mentioning how I feel like it's a big problem in fantasy and sci-fi there's a lot of male authors that tend to be sexist whether they do it on purpose or not that's a completely different subject I don't think it was like on purpose and I don't think Brent Weeks hates women like not everyone will read a book and find it sexist that's fine. But I was just mentioning a few examples and I have so many more. Like just today I was talking about it to a friend and she reminded me of one scene where the kid, like Kip, he's 15 and he's like fat and insecure, which is a little bit annoying to read, but you know, I'm assuming he's gonna grow throughout the series. And he's pretty horny. Like he's always talking about boobs. That's one of the things I was complaining about. And at one point in like a big battle, he accidentally falls face first in the cleavage of a female fighter. I thought that added so much substance to the story and like <laughs> so like it's the type of little things like that that just accumulated and I was like okay was that necessary or like if it had just been that I would have been like okay but it was like that added with all the other things that ends up being like or like even when the main character the female character she spends half the book like I know she was ca captured and forced to wear like a specific dress that is like pretty like skimpy and she spends half the book in a big battle fighting half naked and again fine i guess it's part of the story but it's just like was that necessary i don't know i don't know the thing is i was pretty disgusted by the response and not only the responses but the way it was 
argued in the comments. I feel like it just, as soon as you mention sexism, it just tends to bring the worst from some people. And I don't understand why, because I think we can all say that like very often is just not necessary. I don't consider it being like natural and that we should just live with it or I should avoid reading male author's book if that's gonna upset me. I just think it's ridiculous, like the way it was argued. Anyway, I don't want to really go into more details. If you want to see this, you can go, sh go watch the video. I just think it's ridiculous that we're in 2017 and that it's still such a big issue. And I feel like the community has been really good about uh, mentioning when a book is racist. Like there was a few uh, YA books that came out recently that a few people started mentioning that they liked it or not. And then some people were like, actually, I think this is racism. I don't like this. And then people like listened to the arguments and were like, you know what, actually I agree. Let me change my review or add this, blah, blah, blah. You can have an intelligent discussion about it. But for some reason, as soon as you mention sexism, everyone loses their shit and I just don't understand why. Me mentioning in that video that I think is a big problem that so many male authors, again, not all men, have such a hard time writing complex female characters. It's just ridiculous. Like, I don't understand how it's so hard. Like, they're able to create new magical system, political system, some new religion, some new, like, everything, but they draw the line at, like, gender equality. That's just impossible to write. And I'm not saying that they have to. In some worlds, it makes sense that there's uh, sexism. That's fine. But I just feel like it's way more common with male, but mostly like it doesn't bring anything. Like there's no reason for it. Like there's no like anything that will improve. It's not mentioned that it's not a good thing. It's just like, it's there, deal with it. And it's just like, but yeah, I didn't really want to do a full video about it because let's be real, English is not my first language and I don't think I could argue my thoughts properly. Like I feel like I'm talking about it and it's just like a very casual thing. Like don't start like picking my words and being like, oh, you should have used that word instead because I would probably agree. If we were having this discussion in French, I would probably have a much easier time, but it doesn't matter. It's just the fact that it's 2017. It shouldn't come as a shock when women expect to be treated equally in books. Like they're freaking imaginary worlds. Like why do they have to like, anyway, let's not go back there. Uh, let me start talking about the readathon because that's where we're here. So today I was reading in the bus my next book, which was for uh, a book, read a book with uh, someone on the cover. And I had chosen Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Shiguru. And I was excited to read this because so many people were saying that this is just a classic and I'm on page 30. The only thing is, let me like replay this whole scene. I'm there reading the book and I'm like, hmm, that kind of reminds me of something. I continue a little bit and I'm like, kind of really reminds me of something. Let me check when it was published. I'm like, hmm, 2005. Well, the movie I'm thinking about might have been published. I'm pretty sure it was out. I continue, I'm like, uh, I'm pretty sure I know that story. I check on my phone, I'm like, hmm, same actors I'm thinking. Oops, same story. So yeah, I am personally one of those people that I don't like to read the book half after. After I have watched a movie, unless I'm in the mood for it. And considering this is like a slow paced, like deep book, I don't feel like it's the right type of things to read for a readathon. So I think I'm gonna DNF it in the sense that I'm not gonna finish it for a readathon. I do still wanna read it, but like right now it's just not the right timing, especially since I'm like a little disappointed that I already know the story. So note to this, I'm just sad I read 30 pages for no reason. Instead, I'm gonna be reading a book that also has someone in the cover, but I've heard uh, Sam this morning, she posted a video and she was talking about books that improve as the series goes, which is good because I feel like very often books, you know, like up and down or decreases and everything. But this one, apparently the first one is in the best, but it gets better. And it is Shatter Me by Tara Mafi. And there is an eye, so there's some on the cover. Plus, it's also a book that has been raved about so much on booktube that I thought, you know what, two in one, worst case scenario, if I read other things that aren't working for those challenges, I would have two challenges 
in one book. And since it's YA, it should be pretty fast. It's written pretty big. There's some big space in there. So I think I'm gonna be reading this. There's like 300 pages, but considering I've wasted 30 pages, so I'm gonna go on and start reading and I will update you when I have made some progress. So let's pretend I just didn't shower and I wanted to just update you on the book because I'm at page 101 and I had kind of forgotten what it was about, basically following Juliette and she's been captured by the reestablishment. Kind of gave me some vibes of like 1984. It seems to be a dystopian where uh, something happens, people are dying, there's no more food, uh, basically climatic changes and there's a new government in place and it's not necessarily a very nice one and she has that power she touches people she's basically torturing them they can die from it and that's uh that's it for now 100 pages i like the idea i like where it might be going don't really like the way it's written but since it's ya i can see myself finishing this tomorrow so maybe i will finish another book tomorrow it's bad. We're the third day and I've only finished one book. I'll do better tomorrow. I will.